Hi class, I'm Matt Fisher, your accounting professor. In today's video, we're gonna go over double declining method depreciation. We're gonna use the same information that we used for our straight line method. So we paid 105,000 for this equipment, has a useful life of five years, salvage values $5,000. So here's the journal entry. We're gonna debit the machinery, 105,000, credit, probably notes payable, 105,000, because we probably had to borrow for this. Now, for straight line method, we depreciated it over five years. So that's basically 20% per year, right? So if you took 100% divided by five, that would get you 20% for the straight line method per year. In this video, we're gonna go over the double declining method. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna double that to 40%. So our rate's gonna be 40%, all right? Now you're gonna see how we do this. There's a special way to do this. And I'm gonna show you in just a second how we calculate all of this. But let me point a couple things out here. I said we're doing the double declining method, so that's why we multiplied that by two. Some textbooks show um, 150%. If it's 150%, then it would be 1.5, all right? But most textbooks show the double declining. So that's why we multiplied this by two. Uh, also, I wanna point out, when we're doing the declining method, meth method the declining, uh, double declining balance method, uh, what we're gonna use is the price that we paid, this percentage, and then we're not gonna factor in the salvage value right now. At the very end, we will but we're not gonna factor in the salvage value. And I'll show you right now in just a second how we do that. So let me erase this, put some more stuff on the board, and we'll be right back. Now what I've got on the board is the, the spreadsheet we use to calculate our depreciation expense using the double declining method. So our beginning book value for year one is 105,000. That that's what we paid for this machinery. And then I have in here, this is double declining balance rate. So here are my rates, it's 40%. Remember it was the 20% times two because it's double declining, so 40%. Then that gets me my depreciation expense. So the book value times my double declining amount gets me my depreciation expense. So this gets me $42,000 in year one. Accumulated depreciation, that's all the depreciation that we have. So my accumulated depreciation right now is 42,000. So now my book value, my ending book value is 105,000 minus the depreciation expense, which gets me $63,000. Right. So in the first year, my journal entry for depreciation expense is debit depreciation expense, 42,000, credit the accumulated depreciation, 42,000. Let's take a look at year two. My book value in year two now is this 63,000. 63,000 times the 40% gets me 25,200. So now my total accumulated depreciation is the 42 plus the 25,200 or 67,200. And my ending book value then is 63,000 minus 25,200 or $37,800, okay? Or you could have just said 105 minus 67,200 to get 37,200, or your current book value minus the current year depreciation gets you the same thing, all right? So you can see here what's happening is my depreciation is going down. I had a lot of depreciation in the first year, which, which is nice because that's usually what happens with assets. They usually depreciate a lot more in the first year. So this method really does reflect what's really happening, okay? The straight line method is easy, but it doesn't really reflect what truly is happening with the value of the asset. This method usually does a much better uh, job of 
decreasing the value of the asset and expensing more of it up front. So in the first year of this, the second year, our journal entry would be debit depreciation expense, 25,200, credit accumulated depreciation, 25,200. Let's look at year three. Year three, our book value is, here it is, 37,800. 40% of 37,800 is 15,120. So then our total accumulated depreciation, we would add up all of these and you would get 82,320. Our ending book value then would be 37,800 minus 15,120, which would get me 22,680. Our journal entry would be debit depreciation expense, 15,120, credit accumulate depreciation, 15,120. Year four, the 22,680 would go over here. 40% is 9,072. Total accumulated depreciation, 91,000. 392, that's adding up all the depreciation expense, gets me my accumulated depreciation, and then my ending value is 13,608. Journal entry would be debit, depreciation expense, $9,072. Credit accumulated depreciation, $9,072. Now for year five. This is where it's a little bit different because mathematically, this method doesn't work. I mean, we're doing math, but mathematically it doesn't work. So we have to force it to work at the end. Remember, we didn't take into consideration the salvage value. We just started with the full book value and we depreciated it based off of the full book value. Remember at the end, we want a salvage value. We want this to be worth $5,000. That was given. Our salvage value, what we want this worth at the end, is $5,000. So we want this to be 5,000. Well, our ending book value is 13,608. That's how we're gonna start year five. Our ending book value in four starts year five at that. 40% of this, I'm not even gonna calculate that, but it's not gonna get us to the 5,000. So what we do is we, we force this to work. This is the book value. This is what we want it to be. So then in order to, for this to work, we have to have depreciation expense, the difference of this, of 8,608 to get our total of 100,000 for our accumulated depreciation. Now, when we add all these up, it'll add up to 100,000. Book value 105, total depreciation, I mean, I'm sorry, our, our machinery at 105,000, our accumulated depreciation at 100,000 gets us our book value of 5,000. So our journal entry in year five would be to debit accumulated depreci debit depreciation expense, $8,608, credit accumulated depreciation, $8,608, all right? So once again, what's tricky about this is getting your 40% here, okay, because we were depreciating over five years, and then at the end, you've got to force this to work. Now, let me give you one more just quick example. Remember, I said that we were depreciating this over five years. So 100% divided by five got me my 20%. We're doing double declining, so that got me 40%. Let's say that we're doing just four years of depreciation. If it were, if the problem told you four years, then 100% divided by four gets you 25% per year. That would be the depreciation. For double declining then, you would have 50%. So this is an example of depreciating for five years and double declining would then get you a 40% rate. If you were depreciating over four years under the straight line method, then for double declining, the rate here wouldn't be 40% it would switch to 50%. Okay, I'm just trying to give you some extra uh, examples of what could happen. All right, class, I hope this video has helped you.
You might need to watch it a few times. It is a little bit confusing. Make sure you pay attention to the information that's relevant and important in deciding how to calculate this information. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.